Yes. So I was at the beach yesterday and I'm scrolling on my Twitter in the sunshine, getting that good solid burn. And I came across this tweet that somebody was in Facebook. I follow a ton of different military and veterans, big military Twitter lady. And this person tweeted out that they had been on Facebook and came across this answer. Somebody had asked a question on this like military Facebook group. Have you ever emailed somebody super high rank? Have you ever jumped command and reached out to somebody? And this guy, Chris Hushmond, responded to the comment there. And he said, I emailed the commandant once. Three <laughs> hours later, I was placed in a car and driven around base getting yelled at by every E8 and above. Nothing but good times at 29 Palms. And people were like, no fucking way. You didn't do that. Absolutely not. Not true. So he followed up this guy, Chris, with And this story. is, can I explain how this could possibly happen? Because a yeah. lot of times, like whenever you have these emails, you have this global index. So whenever you're writing an email in the military, every single person who's in the Marine Corps, because they don't really cross branch, but every single person who's in the Marine Corps, you could search their last name, get their email, and just like that, you're swimming in their stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the commandant would have an unofficial official official email everything in the global would be right there so you just put their last name and you can email them as soon as you get one of those counts which you have as a pfc just most folks have a big enough brain not to actually do that right but that's exactly what this guy chris says he did he says my boy said no balls so clearly i had no choice i looked up hagee <laughs> yes, clearly there was right. no other choice i looked up hagee for general hagee in the email like chaps is talking about and sure enough there he was Back then, Blackberries were big, so I figured he would see my email mm -hmm. on his phone immediately. So I sent him an email worded like a te text message. Hi, sir. I was wondering if I could talk to you? Question mark. The commandant <laughs> proceeded to forward my email to every four-star general in the Marine Corps with the subject line, who is Corporal Hushmond? Question mark. And two exclamation can points. Can we pause again? Because Hagee, who he is, I think is important in that every single Marine Corps commandant would be known for discipline. But even amongst commandants, Hagee is known for being the biggest dickhead because it was when things were really starting to get fast and loose at like the onset, really two years into the Iraq and Iraq war where he was selected as commandant because the Marine Corps needed a huge return to discipline mm. after stories like Generation Kill and shit came out that like that. So he was one not to fuck with in the sea of people who were not to fuck with. Absolutely. So this so, is like 0506 this this text message was sent? Right yeah, around there? It would have to be around there. Okay. Yeah. In, in between 04 and 05, yeah. Yep. So Corporal Hushmond emails the commandant and pops up on his blackberry immediately the commandant emails every four-star general he knows just with the subject line who is corporal hushmond question mark two exclamation points this and this isn't like a haha -ha, who is corporal hushmond this is like uh hey motherfuckers who the find fuck out who the is fuck corporal, fuck hushmond. corporal hushmond is so the four stars proceeded this starts a massive manhunt the four stars proceeded to forward it to every sergeant major in the marine corps when my battalion sergeant major was threatening to murder me, he showed me the email from the commandant and the CC list had 50 plus names on it. He told me he couldn't believe I jumped the entire chain of command and he wished I had more stripes that he could take because two was not <laughs> enough. He was also furious about my grammar and said, are you retarded or something? <laughs> Who sends an email like that? I tried explaining it was more of a text message, but he wasn't buying it. The best part. I like. I love that part too, where he's like getting his ass chewed, riding around on the base, and like actually, it's more of a Babadook kind of vibe. Yeah, it was more like of a text wasn't. message vibe, Sergeant Major. Uh, the best part was I sent the email right before Chow. Any seasoned Marine knows you never make it easy to be found during chow. So while the base manhunt was going on for two hours, I was chilling in my buddy's barracks room, slamming mac and cheese. At 1 p.m., I slimed my way back up, and that's when I was grabbed up and taken to be yelled at by my first sergeant, then driven to battalion sergeant major who yelled at me, then driven to base sergeant major who yelled at me, then I was yelled at by the base general. The base general told me he was upset he couldn't NJP me for it because there wasn't an official MCO against emailing the commandant. <laughs> he did, however, say I was never allowed to leave his base because a Marine like me would blah, blah, blah. It actually helped me because when we, they were forcing everyone to go to NCO course in Pendleton, I got to chill. I remember my boy calling me from Lejeune at 5 p.m. that day saying he heard about it. At 7 p.m., the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Estrada, called me on my cell phone. I remember, oh my God. <laughs> I remember tripping out because I recognized his voice from the Marine Corps birthday message <laughs> that he would drop every year. He said, oh my God. He said, I'm curious to meet the corporal with balls like yours, son. 
I laughed, and then he proceeded to yell at me for thinking it was a joke. Moral of the story is that there's an MCO now about emailing the commandant, so don't do it. There is now a Marine Corps order because of, shout out Corporal Hushmond. If he, I, I would love to get this guy on the show and hear more about it. Yeah. But basically, they scooped him up like the mafia scoops somebody off the street, puts a bag over your head, brings puts you in, in a car, van. yeah, and then just sent him through the car wash of getting bitched out for the next. I fucking love this guy. That is something else. That's quite the story. Yeah. Just to succumb. That just tells you what peer pressure really is like. Yeah, no to balls. Su- to no, <laughs> just being saying no balls. To succumb to peer pressure when you know something is so wildly stupid and in no way is it going to end well. To still go ahead and do that, that's something. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody ever, I got pretty drunk once after my first deployment and I did the same thing where I looked up a, an email Yeah. and I was like, hey, sir, just somebody from 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines, a high ranking officer, just hope you and the boys are doing good. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I was Jesus. hammered and I never, heard, I know, I never heard back. Thank God. He was probably just like, oh my God. So dude. one of the uh, teaching points actually, <laughs> when you go to your officer course coming out of one of the academies is they tell a lot of the academy students that they have to tone down the familiarity that they talk to higher ranking officers because at, at school, like you could have a, a colonel, a major that is your instructor and you talk to them just like you would talk to a teacher. But then when you go out into the real army, real Navy, you can't just talk to those people as if they're your buddy. There, There is the chain of command you have to observe. So it is something that we take very seriously. So these emails are not something to be trifled with. You yeah. said that this story has a bad end. I don't think this story has a bad end. You said he didn't even get NJP'd, and now he has an well, awesome he, story, and he, that's run through the entire Marine he's Corps. I think, he, I think he'd say, like, I'd he's, probably do it again. He's very lucky that it didn't have a bad ending, because it very well could Oh, I mean, I, even though it was a really long thing, what Kate read, I am, I assure you that day was long and full oh, of cares. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yes. It was, but that's the thing about junior Marines, too. Like, Whenever you're a junior Marine like that, really staffs are sergeant and above, I would say. Getting your ass chewed is another day. Like, mm-hmm. it's just another day. Now, granted, this takes it to a whole never level whenever you're dealing with a base sergeant major and multiple sergeant major. Getting my ass chewed by a general, I would not give the first fuck about that because it's not going to be effective. A lot of these first sergeants and sergeants major, they're all former drill instructors. Like, a Estrada, I think Estrada did three tours on the drill field. So him coming to you and being like, I am going to end your life. They say it with a certain level of authority in their voice where you're like, you yes, it. I believe today mm-hmm. I yep. might die. Yes. <laughs> today might be the day that I die. I may I just, be killed by words. I just love that there's so many like lower enlisted, like this just t- took me right back. One, I love that he recognized that it was the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps on the phone because he's like, I know that voice from the birthday ball message we have to watch every year. I fucking love that. Also, another thing I really loved about this was, yes, he went through a whole car wash of ass chewings that day and some of them terrifying, like the Sergeant Majors and all that. But when his buddy from a whole other base on the other side of the country called and was like, hey, Lance Corporal Underground here heard what's happening. You, the little nugget that would get me through it was knowing that I had just become a Marine Corps legend for doing what I did. Yep. And- Dude, imagine him going into the barracks that night whenever he gets back at like <laughs> 2300 after his tour of getting his ass reamed out is over with. Everybody, it would be like that oh. meme where the guy in the uh, the black guy in the red shirt like leans back into the crowd and everybody goes nuts like around him yep. and he just like goes into it. Once you survive those ass chewings, all of your peers are like, you badass motherfucker. Yep. As soon as you start drinking, if you're at any stories, every single time for the rest of their lives when they get together and they talk, that story will be like, dog, you remember the time you emailed the fucking commandant? <laughs> yeah, stuff of the legend. commandant? Yes. Did I ever tell you guys that I am part of the field artillery basic course briefing the first weekend for something that I did when I was in Norman, Oklahoma, when I was at Officer What did you course? do? I got arrested. So that okay. I, I had to give my entire class a briefing on what not to do when you are a second lieutenant or a first lieutenant going to Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah. And I was told like years later, they still tell the story and tell the students what not to do when they go to Norman, Oklahoma. There you go. So you got a little bit of legend yourself. Yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm guessing. Public intoxication cons? 
No, it was actually, I can't believe I've never told this story. I was at a pizza place. It's like 2.30 in the morning waiting to order. I was talking to a young lady in line, so I wasn't ready to order when it was my turn. So the bouncer kicked me out. He grabbed me by the neck and the arm and threw me through the door. I stuck my hands out so I wouldn't face first go through glass, and I broke one of the window panes. I was intoxicated Mm. enough that I didn't have my wits about me to think like, okay, that's not a big deal. It's not my fault. He threw me, so I just took off running. (laughs) <laughs> I'm five blocks away thinking, okay, I'm good. I try calling my roommate to figure out where he is, saying we got to get the hell out of Norman. Next thing you know, I'm in a chokehold. I get put to sleep. When <laughs> I come to, I'm back in front of the pizza place with a police officer standing over me saying, you're under arrest. I'm not going to put cuffs on you or anything, but you're going to need to get in the back of the vehicle right now. So I got charged with destruction of public property, excuse me, destruction of public property and public intoxication. The moral here is always be ready to order your slice yes. when it's your turn. Yes. Just be True. ready. Good point, yeah. Kate. Good Indeed. point. Glad you got behind that, Cons, and bounced back. <laughs> but Corporal Hushmond, if you're out there, you're my legend. God, we'd love to have you on the show. Yes. That was just a delight to read.